turned in his resignation and we uh, got a copy of it. Uh, Y'all want to look over, he's going to be the chief of the North Warren Fire Department now. It's been, so we uh, have a motion to accept his resignation. Mark that motion. Have a second? Second. All in favor? All in favor? Uh, uh, you opposed lifetime? There are none. All right, we have uh, uh, Mr. Terry Bell here today. He's, uh, that's his district. He has a, uh, <coughs> y'all don't know Mark, that's Mark Stewart. He's a fireman at Rock Island, first responder, lives on uh, Oh, let's see. Warren, County. Warren County Park Road. Oh, we get to the computer. Um, he's wanting to uh, be appointed for that position. He's contacted Terry Bell and Mars Bond, and uh, as far as I know, he's the only one that has uh, put in for the position right there. Now to be a constable of Warren County, you have to do, have the background check. Um, before, even if we appoint you tonight and you go to full court, before you become able to be a patrolling constable, you have to go through the qualifying class. I've got Philip Young, he's the president of the Constable Association of Warren County. So uh, there's a few steps that he has to go through before he's what I call uh, legal to perform his duties. Uh, like you first said about the, the background check they do. <clears throat> and then uh, he's got 40 hours of in-service that he'll have to perform. He'll have to qualify with his farm, with a farms instructor that qualifies us out of Coffee County. Then there's uh, he'll have to join one of the one of the state one of the state reps. I mean associations, which there's two different ones the state recognizes. And then uh, he'll have to come do his bond at least for. I don't know what y'all are talking about. Is he going to fulfill, fulfill, be appointed for the next three years or till the next uh, election time? Okay, well, he'll, have to, he'll have to still do this. <coughs> he'll have to get his bond to cover him up to the election. <coughs> and then, uh, of course, 911, Mr. Chuck Hastings will have to do another background, TBI background on him again. And the sheriff has to sign off on that paperwork. And then he's ready to <laughs> ready to to start. It's just those, and then come the election. If no one runs against you, you've got to go through all that again. So that's 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 where you're at right now. Uh, I don't know of any in service right now that I can tell you about until April. We just got through with our in service. If I'd have known about it, I know nothing about this. I know about Brother Ramey resigning. I know about that, but I didn't know about you, Brother Stewart. If I'd have known about it, I could have got you in our in service, and you could at least got through your in service, and you could have got your farms, and not paid any membership dues or anything. We'd held that. We would have held that paperwork until this went through. You know what I'm saying? But as of now. Sheriff's Department is the closest one that I know of to have a, the closest in service, which would be in April. We, ours, that we hold for surrounding counties won't be again until October. Uh, but you can you can go through the the, uh, the TCC, which that's what the one I'm a member of, will recognize the sheriff's in service, the 40 hours in service. And that'll be in April. That'll be the closest one that I know of. Well, but you got to go through all, do this other stuff first. But that's that's what you're looking at between now and whenever the next August, August. of 2016. That's what you're looking at right there. 
until you get that done, you'll have the office, but you just won't be able to really do anything until you get all this other stuff done. That's all I, I know. That's what I have to do every year. Well, I'm hoping I can count to look to you for some guidance and. and like I said, if I know it, if I'd have known something about this, I would have. Well, I learned about it about would, it near the end of October. So. I would have. I mean, I know about Brother Ramey resigning, but I did not know about anybody wanting wanting the position or anything. Right. Well, you know, if you're not aware, I ran against Mr. Roberts in the last election. Uh, he, he, he won, and uh, so that's where we are with that. So he, he knew that I, he and I had talked in the past that he was thinking about doing this, and that he wondered if I would be interested in it. So that's kind of what leads us up to tonight, I guess. If we uh, appoint him tonight as, or to move on to full court, his term will be from tonight we have our full court until August. Yeah. The election, because it would be held at the nearest election. And then that election would cover the next two years of his term and then second year that y'all would be able right. to election again, it would start all those four years of term is what uh, across the house. So you need a motion that we... I need a motion on Thank you. Make a motion that we uh, nominate Mark Stewart for that position up to the election. Second. We have a motion and a second. I'll agree. Say aye. Aye. Opposed like time. That resolution will be in front of the next month. Yes. Go forward. Yes. Why he's right and thank all of you. I appreciate it. Sounds like you got a job to get the job. Well, um, with what I'm doing now, my wife complains that I found more ways to work and not get paid for this money she doesn't have. <laughs> this will just add to the list. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're not getting in for the money, that's for sure. Right. Yeah. They'll run a background check, felonies, and he ain't got any good first responders. So his record has to be clean. All right, we've got a resolution on the floor. It said draft on it, but it hasn't been approved by lawyers. He didn't get it. Mm -hmm. This resolution here is about trying to get the governor to keep uh, from closing our driving center we have. And we've had a lot of uh, people concerned about it and because if they close this one, I think the nearest one would be, I believe, in Tullahoma. You could in Tullahoma. There's one in Tullahoma. That way, uh, Halfway between uh, Manchester and Tallahassee, there's one and there's one in Cook. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I, I asked Representative Dunlap to come tonight because we've talked about this, me and him, out. And uh, I wanted him just to throw some ideas and things, just some statistics that he has. Please, sir. So we can have Mr. Dunlap. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Randy. I appreciate the invitation. Appreciate what all of you folks do on the county court um, and our local government. Let me kind of just give you um, some basic facts of what, where we're at. On October the 7th, uh, Commissioner Gibbons uh, met with me and Senator Bowen and Representative Matheny uh, met with all of us separately. I think they <coughs> drove to Coffee County and met met with them on October 7th. And uh, they, Commissioner Gibbons and Assistant Commissioner Bullard, have slated for Warren County's Driver Service Center to be closed, along with 
Hardeman County and Weekly County. So um, from the very beginning, uh, I was strongly opposed and, and told them that. I said this is, you know, this is going to be a hurt, a hardship on our community. Um, we've got seven counties that surrounds Warren County. Um, out of those seven counties, six of them do not have a driver service center. Um, Hardeman and Weekly counties have two or three counties surrounding that do have a driver's license service center. Uh, the numbers that we've been getting since that October 7th, we've been trying to get our research and statistics on top of what safety has given us and they're confirming and looking at the numbers. We've got three full-time staff out here uh, at Warren County and it last year in 2014 they did 14,644 customer transactions. 14,644 customer transactions. And to my understanding, if it's a transaction, that is a revenue generator. And so we have asked for how much revenue in numbers this facility um, provides and, and comes in. What we've also been told is the first 10 months of 2015, we've seen approximately a 50% growth at our center here in Warren County. Though we're well on track to be over 20,000, possibly 21,000, customer transactions at our Warren County Driver's License Center. So the commissioner, we're, we're still working on the state level. Um, I've been talking with the Speaker of the House, <coughs> Beth Harwell, the Chairman of Transportation, Senator Tracy. Um, on the Senate side, on the House side, Chairman of Transportation is uh, Jimmy Matlock from Lenore City in Loudoun County. You know, I've, I've contacted every state official that I know and just let them understand that this is not good for Warren County. Our driver center across from the high school, there's hundreds of these kids that we've got that get their permits or their graduated driver's license and their parents can check them out of school and be over there and get that done very quickly. So there's a loss of productivity that's going to happen when our parents are going to have to drive their kids out of town to get a driver's license. We're trying to get our ACT scores, our high school scores, up to where our, our school is stronger as far as academics in many ways. So there's look at the loss of instructional time when kids are going to have to check out of school for a day to go get a permit or graduate a driver's license. Um, but at the at the bottom line, and it's like what I said, um, you know, to James Clark and others later, is you know we pay state taxes, and there's always been a driver's license service center in our community for for many decades, and um, so you know anything that uh, this committee can can pass a resolution, we're in contact with. Our, our outlying counties around us as well, asking the county commissions in those counties, Grundy County, um, White County, Van Buren, Cannon, school, you know, those counties as well, if they feel like this is important to have a McMinnville Driver's License Center, we feel like we're a regional hub, you know, here in McMinnville um, that serves all those counties also. So it's, it's going to be a hardship. It's, it's going to be a, a bad thing. For our county, um, if it's done, so you know they have, you know, put on the table that the county or the city can provide a facility, and uh, on, on that end, it has happened in Bedford County, Tipton County, and I think Gibson County. Um, but that is a philosophical decision that county leaders and city leaders have to make. It's not my decision. You know, I'm on the state level. I'm, I'm strongly in favor that the state needs to provide state services. And um, I'm, you know, just very upset with how this is being handled. And then in final and in conclusion, I'll say this. They've got us listed as a low volume station. Uh, and I showed this to some of the commissioners already. I, I saw at the last county court meeting there's, they've got the 10 lowest volume centers 
and uh, we're at the top of that 10 lowest. So we're really, in my opinion, I make the contention, we're not the lowest volume singers. We're in what we would call the medium volume. So, you know, in, in my point, I think they've got us, you know, classified in a wrong area. And especially uh, with the, the spike and all the growth and demand we've had in 2015. Um, but when the commissioner met with us on October 7th, he didn't he didn't show us those things. So he's you know scheduled a meeting to uh, to meet with us again, and hopefully we're, we're putting some you know work on this to where maybe they'll they'll come around and, and compromise or, or work something else out. But uh, we strongly oppose the closure of it, and uh, you know if, if they want to look into having bids or looking for something else. That's that's perfectly you know doable on their end, but uh, the lease that they had for the building out at the high school was a 10-year lease, and they're wanting out of that lease early. But I've done research; they have entered into leases uh, in Dyer County, um, in Wilson County, um, where you know they're they're continuing to do this, and and you can read the news for yourself and see what the governor's trying to do on privatizing you know our state parks and universe other events or they're looking into that um, but then here in this case his commissioner is saying you know well if the county and the city will provide it will let you guys do it so it's it's kind of like passing the buck in, in some degree so uh, like I said, I'm I'm not here to to say what the county can do, but I sure would appreciate. I think it would be helpful of a resolution saying that you strongly wish for Warren County Drivers License Center to be acceptable or available for our citizens. Um, and uh, so, you know, I, that's that's what we're working hard to, and and we're not going to let up on the fight. So, just kind of wanted to report that to you. If you have any questions or if I can help. Anyway, yes. One of the things, just to clarify, <clears throat> I believe when you spoke about this, to just make sure I, not only just for getting driver's license and things, but that's an ID facility. So when voting time comes around in three years, I think it's three years, you know, we're trying to get more people to vote. Well, it's going to be, in my opinion, less likely for that individual to drive to Cookville or Tillahoma just to get a photo ID in order to vote unless you or a candidate and want to take a car load or something, you know, that's one of the drawbacks I can see from it in making our voters' numbers go down. I think they've been down in years. I think that's just, uh, am I, is that right? Am I thinking that right? I, I couldn't agree with you more, Randy. Um, and, you know, the state passed a law a few years back that you had to have that photo ID. And, you know, I'm, I'm not opposed to a photo ID, you know, to have fair and free election. But if you make it to where it's such a hardship to get that state licensed issued photo ID, I have a problem with that. Okay. Um, so there are some counties where they have done partnerships with the county clerk. And the county clerk charges a $4 fee, but the county clerk cannot issue the first photo ID license. A county clerk can do a renewal, but like if you're registering to vote and you don't have your driver's license, you don't have a photo ID, a state a state issued photo ID, you couldn't go to the county clerk to get that initial first photo ID. So I think you bring up a great point, Randy. Thank you. Know. Yes. Yes. Question. Uh, Kevin, uh, there's also another uh, problem we're going to be dealing with is, and that's the uh, a place for a highway patrol uh, to meet. Is that correct? An office for them? Yeah. This facility that we're in out here, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, I didn't realize it was as large as it was. You drive by it every day, but there's seven highway patrol there stationed. Well, you know, I work at the high school and as a teacher, to me it's reassuring to know we've got those state troopers you know, as a safety precaution located right across from our high school. Um, but, you know, they, in my opinion, saying they're going to close this thing terminal, at least they're still, I think, searching and looking for a spot for those, those troopers. So, you know, it, it serves multiple 
um, state services, not just for the driver's license. It does the handgun carry permit. You know, folks need to understand that too. Our Second Amendment rights. You know, I mean, you can have a gun anyway, but if you want the handgun carry permit, the concealed carry, you got to have that state ID. And so now, if they close this, which Commissioner Gibbons, you know, that's his intention or his decision initially. We'll have to drive to Tallahoma or Cook Four or Murfreesboro. And, and, you know, here's to me the bottom line on it. If you had 14,000 customer transactions in 2014, if we're on track, we'll have over 20,000 this year. Those folks have got to go somewhere. And what we hear all across is the lines are so long all across the state and the big cities and other folks, other places too. Um, so we're going to put more pressure on those other centers, plus the inconvenience in putting our folks, our citizens, out of pocket to, to, to drive out of town or to drive 40 miles or an hour or so out of town. So it's it's a it's a you know I I think it's very unfortunate and I and and here here's the other thing and I said this in the paper and they quoted me this earlier and it's it's fine the same week that Commissioner Gibbons met with me and Senator Bowlin and Representative Matheny, you know, we've had some surplus money on the state level. They announced, the governor announced, we got all this, we got $8 million in new grant money to go to rural communities to promote economic development. Now, I'm not opposed to that. You know, if we can build more spec buildings and bring in more industry, and the governor's commissioner was down here just a month or so ago at a ribbon cutting, not even a mile or two down the road from our driver's center, you know, bringing in more jobs to Warren County. But, you know, if they've got the money to have new grant money, eight million new dollars in grant money, but they want to save 60000 and cut a, a basic service, to me, that's inconsistent. Something's not, you know, right, in my opinion, on that. So, um, you know, that, that's just a problem I have. So, you know, we're going to keep putting that forward, and and I'm trying to uh, be respectful and uh, diplomatic, and and hope that the governor and them will, will come around. So, anything that the local county can pass a resolution or, or let your voice be heard, I appreciate it. And I know there are several commissioners who have already been doing that. And, and I thank you and appreciate, you know, I think my key is that we all work together and do all we can for our citizens. And, um, you know, as a state representative, I'm doing all that I can and know to do, but I'm in the legislative branch, and this is something that the executive and his administration is putting through that I'm strongly against, and, and I don't think it's treating the working people right. You know, the folks that pay the taxes, and when you need a state service, you expect to be able to drive down the street, drive, drive down the road, and get basic state services. Um, so... <coughs> Um, but I, I will say this on the record. I've spoken to Bedford County Mayor, and about two or three years ago, they were faced with this. And so they had space at their EMA, at their emergency management. And, and I've, I can show you pictures. I've driven to Chevrolet. I've driven some of these folks places and, and look. And it's crowded. I mean, it's tight in there. You know, the facility we've got out here is, um, you know, is, is spacious. And it was built to state specs, you know, um, but but I understand the county's financial situation, you know, and concerns about property.